All right. Yes, sir. Name for pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, welcome everyone to Monday, January 7th, 2013. Happy New Year to everyone. Call the roll, please. Mayor Cedar? Here. Member Burns? Here. Foley? Here. Kinswater? Here. Krebs? Here. Laporte? Here. And McCartney? Here. All present, Your Honor. All right, thank you. If you have any questions or anything during these proceedings, please come up to the microphone, give us your name and address. <coughs> Excuse me. Under Consent Agenda 4. A City Council minutes of December 17th, 2012. Regular meeting recommendation is approved. Uh, B is the Downtown Development Authority minutes of December 6, 2012. Special meeting recommendation received. And C is Harbor Commission minutes of August 25th, October 27th, 2012. Meetings recommendation is received. Motion to approve A through C as presented, Your Honor. Support. All right, the motion is made support. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nothing under number five, ordinances and resolutions. Number seven, reports administration. Mr. Booth, do you have anything? I have one item this evening, Your Honor. Um, at the end of December, the city uh, received notification that three of our employees passed the uh, S2 exam and now are certified as uh, drinking water operators. The employees that passed the uh, test were Keith Eisen, Bob Planka, and Brent Warren. All right, Eisen, Plaza. Warren. All right, thank you. Is the city attorney tonight? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. All right, we'll go to city departments, boards, commissions, committees. Nothing under number eight, unfinished business. Number nine is the new business. A is the renewal of the East China School District facility use mutual operating agreement. Mr. Booth. Okay, I rec director Treese was um, uh, here this evening. I will take that. The, uh, the annual fee for the East China usage agreement is uh, $3,000. It remains the same as it was last year. I ask that council approve as presented. Motion to approve. Support. All right, motion may support questions. I just have one question. On number seven, most of all, in fact, I think all of our programs are within the school day, aren't they? That we don't have to pay for a custodian, extra for a custodian. No, you're walking There's basketball and most everything. Oh, that's right, right. that's after There's school. Evening. Oh, evening. Evening. There are some evening. Evening. So then we do have to pay <coughs> yes. extra. Okay. Any other questions? Well, call the roll, please. Member McCartney? Yes. Burns? Yes. Foley? Yes. Kinswater? Yes. Krebs? Yes. Laporte? Yes. And Mayor Cedar? Yes. Carrie your honor. Thank you. We'll go to B. Set the bid for the 2013 flower order. Okay, the hanging basket um, program for this year. Uh, I'd like to start off by recapping uh, the 2011-12 uh, cost and donations that were received. The, uh, the bid itself was, was for $9,874. The uh, general fund expenses were uh, $9,254, of which we had donations in the general fund of, of $8,665 uh, for a net cost to the city's general fund of $589. So I just wanna, wanted to point that out. The um, hanging basket bid, excuse me, for this year, uh, Jane Krebs was involved. Um, Jane, I don't know if you'd like to highlight any changes. Um, we've, we've, the price of the baskets have come down from two years, really two years ago. So, and you know, that's the savings. And then we're not doing as many on Clinton as we have done previously, like from six up to the railroad tracks. And the ones from M29 to 6th Street are going to sort of be alternated. So it's, it's, it is a little bit less. So I guess we're asking for the, um, for the bid uh, from Gardens and Beyond, which is Bob, is it Decock? Decock. Decock. Uh, for $9,115. Uh, 
And then uh, are we also asking for the um, approval on the flowers? Okay, mm -hmm. for $1,091. And this year the flowers we're doing from one, one place as opposed to going to different greenhouses. <clears throat> that decreases your cost. Yes, yeah. I would think that we accept the bid support. Presented. I support. All right, the motion is made supported. Any questions, comments? <coughs> All right, call the roll, please. Member Burns? Yes. Foley? Yes. Ginsbotter? Yes. Krebs? Yes. Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. And Mayor Cedar? Yes. Very dry. All right, thank you. We'll go to see approved issuance special events permit for polar plunge. Chief Jefferson? Yes, Your Honor. I'm in receipt for a request for approval of a special events permit. The Special Olympics of Michigan are requesting approval to host a polar plunge from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on Sunday, February 24th, 2013, at the St. Clair City Boat Harbor. They have all the necessary documents and received. They're in compliance with the city ordinance. Uh, I've asked if someone would be here tonight, but I don't see anyone. Oh, oh there's somebody right here uh, that could answer any questions that the council may have of this. Uh, pending then the approval for this event. Thank you. I actually have a question. You're you're going to plunge at the harbor? Yes, sir. Might be at their feet. Where wet. would there be open water, do you do you think? Uh, we have a guy, uh, St. Clair. Uh, Why don't you come up to the microphone? Everybody's going to want to hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, St. Clair County uh, Sheriff's Department will have their dive team out, and uh, if a hole needs to be cut, they'll cut the hole in the ice for us. Cool. And we do uh, 27 of these uh, across the state of Michigan all the way up in Marquette and all the way down to the southern corners of the Lower Peninsula here. And uh, uh, we even do one on the steps of the Capitol in Lansing, too. So um, so we've got some uh, experience in doing this, but we thought this was a great opportunity to uh, uh, bring an event here to highlight what our athletes are doing in Special Olympics, but also a chance to bring some people into uh, downtown uh, St. Clair as well. well. I think it's a great event. I was just wondering where you were going to find the water. Yep, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we've are got to plan on one of a couple of the boat wells we're looking at. And we'll just cool. kind of With the way the temperature right going, it might be open water. Yeah, that's <laughs> true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to approve. Basically, at 1 o'clock on that day, they're going to registration at the Voyager. Yeah. And then at 2 o'clock, they'll have a parade of the costumes <laughs> to go to the plunge. Yeah. And at 3 p.m., the plunge party goes back to the Voyager. What, what is the parade route? From the Voyager <laughs> <laughs> to the Harbor. Across the bridge. From the Voyager to the Harbor, the to the harbor <laughs> and back to the Voyager. Especially coming back. <laughs> well, we figure if they get cold, they got to hurry up. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, I moved to approve. I supported. All right. The motion is made supported. Uh, any qu other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank, Thank you, you Chief. Good luck. We'll go to number nine, Kings of the Council, December 19, 27, 2012, and January 3rd, 2013. Hearing no questions, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve as presented. Support. All right, motions made support. Any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let's go to number 10, public questions and public comments. Anybody have anything tonight? Hi, Mayor and Council. Scott Atkins, 717 Witherill Street in the fine city of St. Clair. Glad to see you all. Here this evening because you probably all have seen or heard or read maybe a newspaper article last week. Um, I've talked to <coughs> Mr. Block on this. Um, I can speak and did speak to Mr. Block and uh, representatives from the Voice newspaper on my displeasure about uh, the portrayal of uh, me in the article. But I also want you to know that I felt it wasn't necessarily the fairest portrayal of the city or the city council in the article and the water monitoring. Um, I'd be more than willing at any time to answer any questions, Mr. Booth, if you have any, you can call me or any of the council members. But um, I just want everyone to know that the simple facts on the issue, uh, there was no misrepresentation to any of you. And I think you all understand the circumstances at the time with the water monitoring. I would tell you that uh, it is an issue that on my departure about a year ago, or almost a year ago, uh, we were still in discussion with the consortium members, also the health departments from both uh, St. Clair County and Macomb County. And uh, 
everyone acknowledged that the problem with the formula needed to be fixed. It wasn't fair to expect one municipality to be able to bear the brunt of the cost on their shoulders. However, I will also tell you at the time, uh, as my departure of last year, and I can only speak up to that point, uh, three of the four pieces of equipment were still at the uh, pump location site and were still operating, and we were working out the details with the consultant, which is ECT at the time, to provide in-house training for our folks. That's where that issue was left at the time, and I'm sure that, uh, that all of the discussion afterwards uh, may not have quite trickled back down to this council, and not on any fault of anyone here uh, or anyone that filled in, but certainly it's an issue as identified by the other communities who backed out, uh, that there were a lot of questions out there, not a lot of answers. So uh, I know that uh, things have changed since February of 2012 to now, uh, but that system was operating. It was the intention to shared with the entire council that would continue to do so. And uh, I think it's a discredit, unfortunately, that there's a lot of passing of the buck from people in the consortium. Uh, there were a lot of comments from a representative from the city of Marysville and the city of St. Clair had consented with your approval to do the same thing, continue monitoring and asking for their input and assistance. So I wanted to share that with you this evening because I think that there is some information that perhaps uh, wasn't correct here. Again, I've talked with Mr. Block. He's indicated that he's talked with Mr. Booth, uh, acknowledged that the article wasn't as had been intended. Uh, but nonetheless, once it's out of the bag, it's out of the bag. And I felt that it was my obligation as your former city superintendent, but more importantly as a resident, to come to you and tell you that, uh, in fact, the city did put its best foot forward and continue to operate that system and continue to do so. And uh, I pay for and drink the water here, so certainly I, I would want to make sure that it's healthy as well. But if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them for you. And hopefully this will all get straightened out. But uh, I think it was an unfair portrayal, uh, at least initially, uh, for myself and for the city. And I just wanted to share that with you. So. Scott, I had a question. Though. The the equipment that uh, seems to be the key, to this is the most expensive, and I think it was going to be charged the 30K for uh, maintenance and calibration, I believe. That's the uh, GCMS. I guess it's a pretty sophisticated real-time sure. indicator of certain uh, designated uh, chemicals, elements. Now, I guess my question is, that wasn't uh, released uh, to anyone is to your knowledge when when it was here or was it out for repairs or do you know what what, what the status of it yeah the piece you're you talking about in particular um, the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer big yeah. set of words but that was one of the key pieces of the of the system and we were one of the I believe four locations that had that piece um, that particular piece of equipment had not worked properly for quite some time and that was one of the issues that we had had uh, and I was talking with Mr. Darmstead earlier about the same story here we had tried to get some resolution of that. That piece had actually, to my knowledge, been removed uh, you know, probably uh, well than a year beforehand by that consultant for repairs and technology pieces. And we had, I think, three pieces left in there. It had never worked right uh, and was giving false readings. That was one of the problems that they were trying to go through and, and make a repair. Now, I don't know if it had ever been uh, put back on uh, online or not, but that was one of the key pieces that was the most expensive piece. But also, that was the piece that I believe we were only one of four locations that had. Again, when I talked about the formula issue, one of the discussions that I was having before I left and that we, we kind of were in the middle of is in with this consortium. It wasn't fair for the city of St. Clair or the three other communities with these GCMS machines to bear that entire cost. This is a piece of equipment that was important for the entire operation. So just to ask one municipality to bear that entire cost was unrealistic, but nonetheless, it wasn't even operating correctly, and that was part of the problem. Uh, is trying to have that. So again, I know it had problems. It had been removed at some point that it was being looked at by the consultant. I don't know if it had, it had ever been put back in place or was operating uh, you know, to its uh, maximum potential. The other piece is we know we didn't own that equipment. That equipment was acquired through a federal grant. Uh, you know, the folks at the Michigan DNR think that they may own the equipment. I don't think there was ever an answer of who really owned that equipment. So we had an agreement to house it and have it operated here and we were incurring the costs for the operation uh, post grant that grant was a two-year period of time so yeah. we had picked up that next year and we're running probably you know eight to ten thousand dollars worth of cost to maintain what was left you know, operating there my contacts at the MDQ also say that uh, this uh, monitoring uh, website is password protected did we ever have access did we ever see any any hint of this thing working we didn't hear at City Hall it may have been accessed through the wastewater or excuse me the water plant uh, they might have had the password protection access because the equipment, the telemetry was set up at the pump location, which is down on M29, uh, but yet the, some of the technology may have relayed back to the, the water plant itself. Most of that equipment was all in the, the pumping station down there. So, 
Um, I, I know we never had any access up here. Uh, I never had it. We never had the password. I don't even think we could access that information to view it. Uh, my contacts also said that the, uh, the ability to uh, uh, notify our uh, water system uh, as it has been in the past is fully functional and that we're in compliance with all their requirements for operating a water system. Uh, it's just that this represented an initiative to try to have some like a real time network and that as far as they know it's still uh, uh, a concept to be proven you know it was intended to be a real-time monitoring system that would pick up at the source which is actually the river intake uh, would pick up at the intake and be read inside the building and then it would trigger the alarm system again that was one of the problems we were having it had a number of uh, false positives or false readings so uh, you know the technical side I, I wasn't really involved in that piece but it, it was problematic and I'm sure uh, as I recall discussions with other uh, you know city managers uh, I believe that there were problems that had been experienced in Algonac I think that Port Huron had had problems so we weren't the only ones that were having having issues with the equipment uh, but remember you know this project was set up in a framework in probably 2005 or 6 and uh, you know, none of us that were here or you to make decisions were involved in the in the technical side of things yeah. um, you know there's a lot of information that wasn't uh, quite shared with everyone uh, we, we know that there were problems with the equipment and we were trying to get a resolution on that <laughs> had we uh, been attending the consortium meetings did they have regular meetings with the uh, participants we did have representation yeah. um, at the time I believe mr. Eisen was going out mr. Darmstadter may have gone uh, Larry Brown uh, may have gone in the early stages so we did have some rep representation and uh, again we had quite a bit of dialogue at the end of 2011 and 2012 about how this system uh, you know how the formula could be corrected for fair cost distribution and how we could get the thing to be working the way it was supposed to work and uh, I, like I said I, I left that discussion in probably January of last year about a year from now and uh, those in the know were providing were to provide information to the city and the other members uh, as well All right. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. Any other public questions or comments? Move to number 11. Mayor, Council, comments, announcements. Anybody have anything tonight? Mr. Lockwood would probably want to comment on winter whiteout in this progress. <coughs> well, we're hoping we have snow. <laughs> um, winter whiteout is the 23rd to the 26th of this month. Um, we are in the process of uh, getting it organized and waiting for Janice to come up with the key ingredient. But uh, we're making progress. Mayor, I hope to see you there with uh, your song. With the song? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know how musically talented you are. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay. So, um, for those of you who don't know, on Wednesday, night, down. <laughs> on Wednesday night we do a poetry and songwriting contest. Uh, this is for the competition for St. Clair's Poet Laureate for 2013 and the Bootlegger Balladeer. Um, Thursday we have a new event. It's the uh, Bootlegger's uh, Ball. And then uh, Friday will be uh, the start of the Snow Festival. Um, and then Saturday is uh, weather permitting we will have uh, competing in a competition for the title of the snowman making uh, champion of the free world and we need volunteers to help us uh, make snowmen the city of Saline is the current champion they made 460 snowmen in a two-hour period with 28 people working pretty phenomenal with the chief of police present, can you still announce where the uh, bootleggers ball is going to be uh, situated? I cannot. <laughs> but if you buy a ticket, you're going to get Stubbs' phone number. You can call him and he'll tell you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Anybody else? There is nothing else, Your Honor. I make a motion to adjourn. Support. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Have a good night. <laughs> I <laughs> can't. <laughs>